and welcome back to PC Mag's continuing coverage of, 2000, of CES 2016. This is day zero of CES. I'm Dan Costa, he is Tim Torres, mm -hmm. and we have been going to press conferences all morning. We have seen a lot of cool stuff. Oh, yeah. We saw what I think is one of the hottest products of CES so far. It's still early. Yeah, yeah. But it's pretty important, and it's by Fitbit. Yes, the uh, Fitbit Blaze is what it's called. It's a new fitness tracking device. So, uh, everyone thought it was going to be um, either a device or a new f platform, fitness software platform. It's a little bit of both because it uses a uh, Fitstar, which uh, Fitbit acquired last year. It's Fitstar is like a uh, personal coach on your wrist. Um, so you don't even need a smartphone to get like uh, seven minute workouts, like 10 minute ab crunch workouts. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. And that's what they're trying to, they really need to take the Fitbit and the activity tracker model with all, there's, it's, there's so many ways to track your steps now. Yeah, yeah. Your phone, you can do it with a $30 device, you can mm -hmm. do it with a $300 device. They need to keep moving the product forward and adding value, making it a more robust platform, connecting it to more things, um, and provi providing that higher end product. Uh, did you get any hands on time with the device, or did you get to touch it? I got to, yes. This is Fitbit. It, it, it sounds like the jawbone because it has a personal coach uh, on it. it. It looks a lot like the Apple Watch. It looks, and which is which is what they're doing. They're they're going for the Apple Watch crowd. It looks a lot like the Apple Watch. It has um, interchangeable bands, uh, elastomer rubber, uh, stainless steel link, and leather. What lower here? Yeah. All right. <laughs> boom, boom. 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 Okay. So we had another question. Is it yes. work with Android and iOS? Android, iOS, and Windows. Um, so Wait, what? Win what Windows, is yeah. Windows. Windows phones. So you could, I guess, use Cortana with it somehow. Okay. Probably not. But um, no, I couldn't. I could not actually wear the device. I have to go somewhere else for that. But um, I did get to look at it. It looks a lot like the Apple Watch. It might be a little wider because it has to fit in all sorts of heart rate. We have a question. What, Fitbit, what can Fitbit do that Apple Watch doesn't? Question. That is a good question. Well, it will be uh, it will be it will cost less, <laughs> which <laughs> is it'll which work is with very Android. Good. It'll work with Android and Windows. And phone, Windows. Which Apple, mm. Apple, the Apple Watch will never work with them. No. And you get that that whole uh, ecosystem. Like the reason I'm wearing a mm. Fitbit, which I just recommended the Fitbit Surge because you gave it an Android oh, choice. I'm wearing the Charge HR here, which. And the reason I went with Fitbit is because it's got that platform. It let mm. it connects to my scale. I've got the online mm. tracking system. Apple's a little bit behind as far as that diversity of that ecosystem of products. Right. Although, to be fair, the Fitbit uh, Blaze does not have, it's, it looks like a smartwatch, but it really isn't. There is no app store. So you're not going to use any other okay. apps on the Fitbit Blaze. Question. What about Pebble? What about Pebble? The Pebble, the Pebble does not have a heart rate sensor. The Fitbit Blaze does. It does not have a, um, it cannot, tr well, I don't, think, I don't think it does track sleep. It won't, no. it won't track sleep automatically. No, the Fitbit Blaze tra tracks sleep automatically, heart rate automatically, and it could um, activate workouts automatically, which could be cool because some people like me, I could go on a run. I'll be like three miles in, and I'll forget to activate my workout, so all those th miles and steps yeah. and calories will be wasted. I do that all the time. Yeah. I get so pissed off. Like I want to count every single step because I exercise so infrequently. Yeah. I don't want a single step to go untracked. So that could be cool, although uh, in my experience, those kinds of, those kinds of automatic tracking devices uh, are not that reliable. Hopefully this one will be. Another question? Uh, you had me at Thermos and what's a smart thermos? Oh, smart oh thermos. yes. Here we go. He, we have somebody who to notice. Yeah. I am holding a Thermos brand, Smart yeah. Lid, connected to, it's a connected hydration bottle. Why on earth does anyone need a connected hydration bottle? Some people really want to know how they take in their water, what temperature their water is at. It works with Fit, the Fitbit app, so ass assumedly you know, it will work it's with the Fitbit Blaze. Yeah, it's a peripheral. And this is, I, I've actually, since I do have the Fitbit, I don't, one of the things, I try and track my food, mm -hmm. and I'm not really great at it, I bet most people aren't. No. I almost never track my water. Like, it's just, it's a pain in the ass. You can never get enough, you never, you're always missing stuff, you never know yeah. what your goals are. It's <laughs> just, I never, and then you're like, at the end of the day, you're like, who really cares? I drank a lot of water, I'm gonna be good. Right. This, I guess, takes some of the guesswork out of that. Hopefully, we have another question. Fitbit over the Microsoft Band? In my opinion, yes, the Microsoft Band, it has a lot of features to it, but the Band, it's just, it's not, I don't think it's designed that well. It doesn't feel comfortable, especially for me, I have really skinny wrists, and the Band is just, it's just so bulky, and I feel it all the time. Fitbit products, they're usually very comfortable. They're very lightweight. I'm wearing the Charge HR now. I barely even feel it. The Blaze should continue that uh, trend. It's going to be hard to get to. This is going to be hard to get to. Let me. All right. 
Yeah. yeah. No, don't even worry about it. All right. You can, if you want to see pictures of it, check out PCMag.com. Did you review the, the band, the Microsoft band? I did not review. Yeah, I did review the band. I did not review the Fitbit Charge HR. But okay. if you want to read my uh, Microsoft Band 2 review, you can check it out at PCMag.com. Yeah. Again, we're going to have reviews of all these products. A lot of stuff is being announced today. Yes. We'll have hands-on yeah. with. It takes us a couple, a couple hours to get caught up and actually meet with the vendors and get that hands-on time. Right. You could, you could expect the Blaze to um, appear in March. We have another question. Thermos-only water. Can I trick my Fitbit and fill with soda? <laughs> soda or beer. <laughs> <laughs> what is How about battery backup? I'm guessing that's what I'm guessing. That's a really good question. Well, the battery life on this lasts, well, it says 12 hours. The battery backup, the battery life on the Fitbit Blaze should last five days, which is actually really impressive for a, a fitness tracker with a color touchscreen display. You know, I didn't realize this is a rechargeable battery. So it's a rechargeable battery with, with 12 day batter, battery life, or the batteries will last up to 12 days. 12 days is pretty good. Oh, that is, that's great. 12 days yeah. is pretty good. I mean, battery life in the fitness tracker smartwatch world is typically pretty poor. Yeah. So Fitbit has done a great job so far. It looks like the Blaze and this thermos will continue that. We got another question. Yes. We love these questions. Thanks for sending them in. We've actually got some time. We're not rushed right now, so we can take all of your questions. Lay it on us. Is it waterproof? Does it have wireless charging? Oh, two questions. Two questions. The Fitbit Blaze is water resistant. They did not give us a rating specifically. Um, and what was it? means you can get it wet, but don't go swimming with it. Right, and don't don't press any buttons under underwater, <laughs> which is usually a bad idea. Uh, but yeah, you should be able to wash your dishes, take them in the shower, but do not go in the pool. Do not take it with you uh, to the Shark Reef Aquarium at, uh, <laughs> at here at Le in Las Vegas. Do you remember the second half of that question? Uh, wireless charging. No, I do not believe so. Yeah. You got to plug them in. Yeah. Well, most of these things, and that's where these things start to fall down, is yeah. that once, you know, a dead fitness tracker is totally useless. Yeah. And they charge relatively quick. The surge charges 20 minutes, 30 minutes. The Charge HR also it has, it's, yeah, the same amount of time. Yeah, it's pretty, so that part is impressive. Um, but again, uh, very different than the Apple Watch. Right. Talk a little louder. Talk a little louder. I have to talk a little louder, evidently. How about me? You're All right, good. groovy. I talk louder. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us, and we understand <laughs> yes. there are some audio challenges, particularly at last night's CES unveiled. That uh, was a terrible, terrible place to try and periscope. Uh, we're probably going to do it again tonight at a Pepcom event, which is going to be a very similar type of event. A lot of cool products, but we're going to have to yell. We're going to have to make ourselves heard. Uh, you went to CES unveiled last night too and saw some cool stuff. I did. Oh, but one more thing about the uh, Fitbit Blaze. I yeah. want to want to say that even though it looks great, it has a touchscreen color display. It does not have GPS which really drags me down because it's running is my main thing and I do not want to have to carry around a smartphone while I'm out on a jog. Yep. And that's the key difference with the Surge, right? The Surge has GPS. The Surge has GPS. So if, if you use Surge, you may not want to upgrade, but if you really want that touchscreen color display, then you may want to. Yeah. You recommend Surge? I recommend Surge. I have recommended I've been wearing Surge for six weeks now. Mm. And um, I'm, you know, usually there's a couple of weeks and then, oh, there we go, we'll show it off. We'll see how many steps I did today. I will do much better than that by the end of the day, I promise. But uh, I'm interested to see how CES affects the number of steps. But I really like it. It's a bit bulky over some shirts to get it on. Mm. But um, it, it, it does everything I need to do. It connects to Fitbit. I, cr I have the account. I've got friends on Fitbit that I can challenge. My sister's on Fitbit. She's kicking my ass a little bit. But uh, The Blaze can do all that too. And like the Surge, it can also do uh, push notifications like calls, texts emails, um, but you no know, social media stuff, so it, it kind of curates the uh, notifications. I'll tell bit. you, the notifications I love. So I get text messages that come in, I get a notification on my watch, if I glance at it, I can see who it's from, and tap on it to actually read the message if I do it quickly. So that's a killer app for me. That's another reason why I would stick with the search. We got yeah. another question? Yes. GPS do you recommend uh, problems losing Fitbit's wire? Oh, ah. yeah. Yeah, the Fitbit uses a proprietary charging cable, which I, I don't like either. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the Blaze will use. I assume they're going to continue the proprietary charger. Um, as far as GPS smart uh, fitness trackers, I assume that I recommend, that I should recommend. Yeah. Uh, the, Moto, the recent Moto 360 Sport by Motorola um, is pretty good. My beef with that is that it uses Android Wear. I am not a big fan of that, but as far as Android Wear watches, it is the best in my opinion because it has GPS and because it has uh, many, uh, well not many, it actually, actually it's only useful for runners. So it's very specific, it's for runners the, who want GPS. What yeah. about Garmin? I mean Garmin was sort of first to this space right. with the Forerunner series. They had 
They were, they were in the activity trackers before we even knew to call them that. True. And they've got GPS built into almost all of them. Um, have you tested any of those? Garmin is good. My personal experience with Garmin is uh, honestly not that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also used the TomTom Tom Spark, which has a GPS, which I've also enjoyed as well. So CES unveiled, you were there last night, I was yes. there, we did a show this morning, talked about some of the cool products there, but you can't see everything, there's just not enough time. No. What was the neatest thing you saw? Oh, the shower head. The shower head was a little nuts, um, because what more do you need a shower head to do, but I, I, I was gonna do, we were going to do a video on it, and then mm -hmm. she did the whole explanation, I was like, okay, this is really kind of weak. Yes, it does have a, it has a color LED indicator which tells you how much water you've used. So if how you really want to, how long basically. your shower basically, which you could use a watch for or a clock. But yeah, you know, if you want, if you're really, it also tells you how much money you're using, I think, was an, another back option. Into, in in yeah. areas where water is very um, sparse, sparse yeah. you can track how long your shower is. The light will actually go from blue mm. to green to red when yeah. you've been taking a very long shower. And um, you can calculate that out and make sure it saves you money. It's, right. I think it's an amusing device. It is for amusing. For 100 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Just go I to Bed Bath & Beyond and find something yeah, like for half that. But there's yeah. a lot of that at the show. Like, this is the beauty of CES is that you've got some great innovative products. Mm. And then you've got some stuff that's like, oh, I see. So you took some cheap sensors, bolted <laughs> them onto some product. Um, and yeah. now you're charging 10 times the cost of what you could, it would cost to get a generic version of it. Yeah. Um, smart thermometer, thermometers, the same way. The Why? by Withings, right? Withings, yeah, yeah. yeah has a, uh, Withings has the smart thermometer we talked about today. It's going to be 100 bucks, and it's going to take your temperature. That's great, and I love the fact that you can back up all of your readings, and you can have a history of all of your temperature readings. Different profiles. We've got a yeah. large family. That's, that's always cool. sick. You could use, you, but I mean, because you put it up to your forehead, and that's how it measures. So that's put, it's not intrusive. Like but you can get yeah. a thermometer for 10 bucks at CVS right. that'll tell you whether you've got a little fever or a big fever. Right. And that's really the only thing you really need to know at, at any given time. But again, this is the beauty of CEF. You get to make those, see those products, see the innovation, and then we get to test them and say, this is worth your money, this is not worth your money. But that's really the internet of, of things in a nutshell, right? It's all these things that you don't really need, but they all have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi cap cap capabilities. Yeah. We have a question. No, sorry. Oh. It's that, and that's key, okay. the, the, determining the difference between what is something that you want and what is something that you need. Right. So the, the Fitbit Surge, at this point, is almost something that I need. Like, I feel like I need a fitness tracker. A year ago, I didn't feel that way. Um, I lost three of them, uh, and I, I, was really, I was really frustrated with the experience. Now, it's, it's become part of my life. I depend on it. I've changed my li life to accommodate the device, um, and, and that's what makes it something you need as opposed to something you want, and I think there's a lot of categories that are sort of shifting over that way. Husband, husband has small arm Fitbit watch. It's too big. Oh. The Fitbit too watch. Which, which Fitbit watch? That's I, I would recommend... The Charge Using H, the I mean, my arms are are pretty skeletal, and the Fitbit Charge HR uh, fits fits mostly perfectly for me. Yeah, it could yeah. be. Can you sync with Garmin? Oh. I don't think so. You know what? That's yeah. one of the interesting things is that most of these companies set up these online accounts that you can export all of your data to a web-based account and check how you're doing. Mm. But that data, most of the time when you put it up there, it's trapped. It's really hard to get back yeah. out. Uh, devices don't interoper interoperate, so if you don't stay within a platform like Fitbit, um, you won't be able to work with a Garmin or another third party. Nabu another question? Fitbit. Which one? Nabu versus Fitbit. Nabu versus Fitbit. Nabu, like the Nabu Razor, like the Nabu Razor X? I would go Fitbit all the way. Nabu looks like a no Fitbit. No equivocation there whatsoever. No. Sorry, no. Nabu. <laughs> like, I like the idea of the Nabu. It looks like a Fitbit. It feels like a Fitbit, but it is not one. It lacks many of the, s many of the features the Fitbit has, uh, like uh, heart rate, like um, reliable push notifications. Plus, um, they have they they go for like a gamer angle, and as far as I've as far as, as far as I know in my testing, those gaming angles like uh, augmented reality games like the zombie tag and stuff like that, they don't exist yet. Yeah. So they they feel like prototypes still. So once they arrive, then maybe that could put, give them an I edge. But but once they do arrive, yeah. they're gonna want those developers are gonna want to reach the most number of people. Right. And that means developing for Apple Watch. It means developing for Fitbit. Right. They're gonna go where the mo where the biggest platforms are. And that's this, Fitbit. Yeah. And that's Fitbit. Fitbit at the moment. was the number one downloaded app on Christmas Day. Yeah. Nabu can't even reach that in their wildest dreams, yeah. unfortunately. And the, and the thing that you also want to you want to join a platform that's growing, that's robust, so that when silly stuff like this comes out, you're going to be able to, to tap into it with relative ease. And that's not necessarily true with with Nabu. No. It might be true with a company like Fitbit, like uh, Misfit. 
Oh, Misfit, Misfit yes, got yes. A, a big audience yeah. and, and lower cost devices and some nice diversity. Oh, def they have the lowest cost device that I know of, the, mis the Misfit Flash, Flash Link, which looks like a, a physical button, but it can track distance, calories, miles, and even control music on your iPhone. Yeah, very cool. And you're meeting with them later today. I'm meeting with them later today. They're revealing, uh, revealing a new device. I'll see what it is, and I'll check back with you guys later. Do we have any other questions? Let me plug. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Mark Fields, the CEO of Ford, at 2.20 Pacific Time, 5.20 Eastern Time. Uh, tune in on Periscope. It's going to be a great interview. Uh, we should have very good audio quality because we won't be doing it on the floor. I'm going to ask him about his Google relationship. Uh, uh, questions? Uh, my HP laptop caught fire on Christmas Eve. Suggest new. Um, oh. Yeah, I would say yes. I think, um, <laughs> I think yes. Do you have a functioning toaster? Uh, if you don't, <laughs> then maybe use your laptop for that. But no, I think yes. if, you're, if it actually lit on fire, A, you should call HP and try yeah. to get them to send you a new one. Um, oh, he wants a new laptop. Yeah. Oh, he wants a, a new laptop. A new laptop. Um, just tell him to get a MacBook and leave get, it with that. Yeah, the new MacBook, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That looks pretty good. Yeah, the, uh, but it, you know, I, I would check out PCMag.com, uh, top 10 best laptops. We've got laptop recommendations at every price point. But to Mark Fields later on today, I'm going to go and prep for the interview right now. Uh, we're going to interview him. We're going to talk about his Google partnership. We're going to talk about integration with the Amazon Echo, smart cars, the whole deal. That'll be in just a couple hours from now. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe to, to our Periscope. We're going to be doing this for the rest of CES 2016. And I guarantee you the audio will improve every single Periscope. Thanks for joining us.